New developments in the fight over medication abortion. This week, the nation's second largest pharmacy chain, Walgreens, announced that it will no longer dispense abortion pills in states where Republican leaders object to the medication, even if the medication remains legal there. Uh, the move comes after nearly two dozen Republican state attorneys general threatened Walgreens with legal action if abortion pills continue to be distributed in their states. Meanwhile, a coalition of Democratic state attorneys general are now suing the FDA for unnecessarily singling out the medication abortion drug, excuse me, mefeprostone, with excessive regulation. Three of the state attorneys general who signed on to that lawsuit join me now, Delaware Attorney General Kathy Jennings, Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum, and Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays. And one day I'm going to get the name of that medication uh, right. Um, Attorney General Rosenblum, I'd like to start with you. Uh, <laughs> Th this lawsuit that you are co-leading against the FDA. Tell us why, uh, why are you calling for restrictions to be dropped on medication abortion? Well, first of all, you can just call it MIFI because I think that's what a lot of people are referring to it as. Uh, and, and then there's also misopropol. So there's mifeprostone and misopropol. Those are the gold standard for medication abortion. And they are also used uh, with regard to miscarriages and other kinds of complications of pregnancy. So this is a very important combination of drugs. Uh, unfortunately, uh, primarily for political reasons, we believe, the um, REMS have been applied to this drug, mefepristone, unnecessarily. And we are, uh, we have brought this lawsuit. We have a great coalition of, unfortunately, it's all Democratic attorneys general, but wonderful colleagues, two of whom are with us this afternoon. And we've brought this lawsuit because what we believe in is access to health care. And we believe that abortion is health care. We believe that this lawsuit will help providers, will help patients to be able to obtain access to medication abortion, which has been proven to be safe for the last 20 years. It has been used regularly in every state in the country. So we are doing everything that we can to ensure access to these drugs and these REMS slow down access. They don't present, prevent access, but it, they, they're a strategy of the FDA that is not required for this drug. It is a safe drug. It is proven to be safe. So we're really proud to be bringing this lawsuit with my fantastic colleagues here today. Uh, Attorney General Mays, let me ask you about Walgreens for a moment. Your reaction to their decision to uh, no longer dispense abortion pills in states where Republican leaders object to the medication, even if it is up until this moment legal in those states to do so. Yeah, it's tough, and 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 we we uh, are uh, among those states who have actually encouraged Walgreens and CVS and other pharmacies to continue to offer uh, the medication despite that pressure by Republican AGs. But you see, you see in that that effort by those GOP attorneys general to continue to try um, to. Uh, limit the access uh, of women to abortion in every possible way they can find. And, you know, despite the fact that Roe was overturned and it was sent back to the states, they're still making these efforts in states to, to limit a, a woman's access to abortion. And that's why these actions by Democratic AGs largely um, are so important. We're going to continue that fight uh, going forward. And we've got a big Texas case coming up where we're fighting for the access to these two uh, medications uh, that are so crucial. Uh, Attorney General Jennings, um, what are your thoughts on, on the Walgreen decision? It, because it came after, as I understand it, this coalition of 24 attorneys general sending a letter to both CVS and Walgreens supporting their decision to offer abortion pills in their pharmacies after the FDA granted their uh, certification. Eamon, thank you for having us on tonight. And as my colleagues have indicated, we do not support Walgreens' decision. And we hope that by fighting back, and by calling out uh, their decision to limit access in all of these states, some of whom do not outlaw abortion, some of whom ha allow access to abortion, 
But that means that women in those states where they can legally obtain an abortion, including medication abortion, can't get the necessary medication from their pharmacies. And so what we saw in Kansas, for example, was that the, the voters in Kansas overwhelmingly voted in a referendum to support abortion rights. And that is one of the states where the Republican attorney general has asked Walgreens, urged Walgreens and CVS to limit access. That's not right. It's not legal. And we need to make sure as attorneys general that we continue to protect uh, access to abortion and more, more specifically and recently access to medication abortion nationally it is used in the majority of abortions in our country. In my state of Delaware, it's used in over 60% of abortions. And so it's incumbent upon Democratic attorneys general to band together, and we have, right. uh, under the leadership of Ellen Rosenblum and Bob Ferguson, uh, to make sure that Mifepristone is accessible to as many women who need it in this country as possible. Uh, Attorney, Attorney General Rosenblum, I, I want to ask you about, you know, we can all agree that the space for women's rights are, are shrinking in this country, and yet you recently launched Oregon's Reproductive Rights Hotline, which is actually trying to counter that, trying to provide free legal counsel to patients uh, seeking uh, abortion care. Talk to us about that step, what, what kind of reception it has had, what kind of legal advice can be offered in, in a country or in states that we're seeing or witnessing where these rights are shrinking by the day. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to my colleague, Kathy Jennings, because we actually copycatted her. Her state was ahead of us, along with New York. There are a lot of these abortion rights, uh, reproductive rights, really much more expansive than abortion hotlines now, because we want to make sure that anybody who's confused or has questions has a place to go to get their questions, their legal questions answered. Uh, we've had a good response. Uh, actually, we're trying to get the word out because we are concerned that we haven't had as great a response as we should have. But let's face it, here in Oregon, we are one of the states with uh, the fewest, actually no restrictions on abortion. But we wanted to make sure that people weren't confused by Dobbs and what the impact of Dobbs would be in our state. And in fact, we have a task force that is recommending legislation, because even in a state like mine, we need to do a lot to ensure access, to ensure uh, the safety and the protection of our providers and our patients. There's so much that you have to do, even in a state like this, that it's quite frightening to think about what it would be like in a state where we frankly where we don't have democratic ags working together the way the three of us and the rest of our colleagues are uh, attorney general mays i was talking to my colleague alicia menendez on the top of the show uh, about how things that are happening in states may affect the rest of the country and we shouldn't ignore them you have a texas republican lawmaker who just introduced a bill that seeks to ban access to websites that sell or provide information on how to obtain uh, abortion pills. And, and we could say it's hyperbolic. We could say it's not going to affect the rest of the country. We can ignore that at our own peril. But could that actually happen, where now just the information itself, hotlines, information, websites, can become illegal? I mean, that, that is uh, the danger. And I'll, I'll just add that I, I am about to stand up a reproductive rights unit in my office, following my colleague's example, um, to address this very uh, type of scenario. You know, if you, if you have a state like Arizona that has a Republican legislature, thankfully we have a Democratic uh, attorney general and a Democratic governor now who will stop that kind of thing. But in those states that have both both uh, Republican uh, legislatures and governors, that's the kind of thing that we have to be worried about. And so, you know, I have been clear here in Arizona that we will never prosecute a woman, a doctor, a nurse, a, wid a midwife for abortion. Um, but, you know, we have 15 county attorneys in Arizona. And I've been clear also that I will fight any effort by a county attorney to prosecute. Um, we are concerned about, uh, you know, what could happen going forward 
or you know uh, interference by third parties uh, uh, against uh, the efforts of a woman to seek an abortion. Um, so those are the, exactly the kinds of things that we need a strong AGs, you know, thinking about being prepared. Uh, to take legal action in support of these uh, core constitutional rights. Attorney General uh, Jennings, I wanted to pivot for a moment and ask you about your efforts to end uh, your state's opioid epidemic. You recently secured uh, a staggering $43.6 million settlement from CVS and Walgreens for overprescribing dangerous opioids. Talk to me about how consequential this settlement is for your state and for people across this country. This settlement is extremely consequential. It is the latest round of uh, our efforts across the country on a bipartisan basis to hold accountable manufacturers, distributors, and now nationwide pharmacies for their role in the opioid epidemic. In our state, in our small state, uh, we have several small towns. In the town of Selbyville, which is a very small town in Sussex County, Delaware, our southernmost county, there were more pills, opioid pills, dispensed in that town four times over the population of the town. And that was on a yearly basis over and over. And we had to call a stop to this behavior. And so the settlement brings in much needed dollars for abatement uh, to help people desperately in need um, to get more facilities set up in our state and to get more access to the care that people need, including Narcan and including treatment and making sure that they're housed and transported. So this money will all be put to those very important purposes. And the need for this money is urgent. It's urgent in Delaware. It's urgent across our country.